everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. As you may see from the title, I would like to share some thoughts around being an ambassador for Christ. About a month ago, Sally told me that this was something that she thought would, would be a wonderful topic for a midday prayer. Her inspiration on this came from the Faithful Daily Living reading on the 6th of May, which looked at 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19 and 20. This topic made me think of my actions and behaviours in my workplace versus my Christian walk. I worked at a research company called Nielsen for over 30 years. For the bulk of my time there, I analysed business issues for clients and presented it back to them. During this time, I was always aware that my performance and actions reflected Nielsen. Some of my clients even called me Mrs. Nielsen. In my latter years, I got involved in a global training role and spent a lot of time training Nielsen associates not only on analytics, but also on Nielsen values and behaviours. I loved Nielsen and it defined me. In fact, it took me a while to become Christelle again and to figure out who I was without Nielsen. Today's message is very much for myself. If only I could be as good an ambassador for Christ as I was for Nielsen. What does being an ambassador mean? An ambassador is someone authorised to act on behalf of a higher authority. They serve as an, a representative. The common usage today is a person who represents their country to a foreign, foreign government. I would like to share a lovely illustration from P.R. van Gorda. It goes. Late one night, a salesman drove into a strange city and tried to get a room in a hotel. The clerk informed him that there was no vacancy. Disappointed, he started to leave the lobby when a dignified gentleman offered to share his room with him. Gratefully, the traveller accepted his kindness. Just before retiring, the man who had so, shown such hospitality knelt and prayed aloud. In his petition, he referred to the stranger by name and asked the Lord to bless him. Upon awakening the next morning, he told his guests it was his habit to read the Bible and commune with God at the beginning of each day, and he asked if he would like to join him. The Holy Spirit had been speaking to the heart of the salesman, and when his host tactfully confronted him with the claims of Christ, he gladly received his Saviour. As the two were ready to part, they exchanged business cards. The new believer was amazed to read, William Jennings Bryan, Secretary of State. You see, William Jennings Bryan was not only the Secretary of State under Woodrow Wilson, but more importantly, he was an ambassador for Christ. Let's now take a closer look at 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19 to 20. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. When Paul wrote those of these words, the gospel was new to the world. The good news was still news and had only just begun its journey, journey around the globe. There was little need in those days to explain that every follower of Christ is a missionary to their world. The goal in those days was primarily to make sure that people heard of Christ. As you all have surely noticed, times have changed. In the 21st century, we face a new challenge entirely. The good news has spread, and those who are called to lead to Christ have already heard about him. We now have a double mission. As before, we must preach Christ to those who need him. 
and we also must battle against the world's misconceptions of Christ. Every believer is an ambassador for Christ and is called to represent Christ in a way that both appeals and impacts this world. God wants us to help people, believers and unbelievers alike. Paul Tripp writes the following about being an ambassador for Christ. This lifestyle as an ambassador is not simply for the few who are privileged to minister as a career. God's kingdom work involves every member of the body of Christ. Whether you are a child, a spouse, a neighbor, a relative, a pastor, an employer or employee, a teacher, a student, or a friend, all of your relationships must reflect your ambassadorial, ambassadorial calling. God sends unfinished people to unfinished people with the message of his grace so that he can reclaim every heart for his glory. What a wonderful quote and so reassuring to know that although we are unfinished people, we can positively influence and impact others for him. However, we need to be mindful and aware that we are ambassadors in so many places, our homes, our workplace, our church, our community, on social media, and any other people we may encounter daily. The task of being an ambassador may not always be easy, especially when encountering some non-Christians who may be cynical, critical, and judgmental. I read somewhere that the main difference between a sincere, dedicated Christian trying to model his or her life after the image of Christ and a critic looking for faults in the lives of Christians is intent. Neither will be entirely free from mistakes and sins, but the one is trying to do better, while the other is trying to excuse themselves by saying, I'm just as good as those hypocritical Christians. I read an article in Church Leader where Pastor Dan Kimball wrote about an epiphany he experienced when he took some time out to interview college students one of the more anti-Christian campuses in California. He wanted to first-hand hear about their thoughts on Christianity. He asked two questions. What do you think of when you hear the name Jesus? And question two, what do you think of when you hear the word Christian? This made me think about these questions. I couldn't recall any times where I heard, had heard negative comments about Jesus from non-Christians. I think that the answer to question two is often not quite as positive. Unchristian is a book that resulted from a research project inspired to help new generation of leaders understand the perceptions and images that young people have of Christianity. During an extensive three-year research project, thousands of people between the ages of 16 and 29 were either surveyed or interviewed about their perceptions of Christianity from an outsider's point of view. As may be seen from the findings, the first percentage reflects young outsiders, whilst the second percentage reflects young churchgoers. I was not really surprised by the fact that 85% of outsiders thought that Christians were hypocritical, but I was very saddened by the fact that 47% of young churchgoers goers also thought so. Similarly, 52% of young churchgoers felt that Christians were judgmental, and a whopping 87% of young outsiders felt the same. What a sad indictment. However, I think there is so much that we can learn from these perceptions that may guide us to be better ambassadors for Christ.
Do we have what it takes to be ambassadors for Christ? While Jesus was on this earth, he asked many questions, but I would like to focus on three today, which I think are very relevant. The first question he asked was, who do you say I am? At the time of this question, many people were confused about Jesus' identity. Who do you say Jesus is? A good man? A great teacher? One of many ways to get to heaven? Or do you say he is the way, the truth, and the life, as Jesus describes himself in John 14, verse 6? Remember, you have to be a citizen of God's kingdom before you can be an ambassador. The second question Jesus asked, do you believe? Jesus said in Matthew 21 verse 22, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Let's not be like the double-minded one in James 1 verse 6 to 8 who doubts and is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. May our response to him be like that of the demon-possessed boy's father who replied honestly in Mark 9 verse 24, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. How do we live out our faith to the world? Do we really live out this belief? Or do we worry? Are we anxious? Do we doubt? Even in our darkest hour, it is critical that we need to display our faith to the world. The last question I'd like to focus on is what does scripture say? Jesus asked this to the Pharisees in Luke 10 verse 23 to 28. Remember, when you're in a predicament, when you have to choose between offending someone else or offending God, when you have to draw a line in the sand instead of asking, what would Jesus do? And taking your best guess, ask instead, what do the scriptures say? For instance, in Matthew 7, verse 1 to 2, Jesus says, Judge not that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And in Luke 10, verse 26, Jesus says, Why do you see the speck that's in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? When Jesus was asked, which is the greatest commandment in the law, he replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. This is the first and greatest command. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these commandments. I do believe that the questions Jesus asked during his time on earth are still very pertinent to us today. It will not always be easy to live the life Jesus wants us to, but through prayer and guidance from the Holy Spirit, we all can try to be ambassadors for him in every interaction we have, no matter how small. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, thank you for being our Saviour and Lord. Help us through the Holy Spirit to earnestly listen to you so that we can be your true witnesses in this world. In Ephesians 5 verse 1 to 2 we read, Imitate God therefore in everything you do. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, 
a pleasing aroma to God. We are called to copy your example again and again, not just once, but again and again, day by day. We are called to not sin, to not be dishonest, to not retaliate, to not judge, but to love instead. Lord, many times it is so difficult to try and have your qualities of love, patience, self-control, compassion and servanthood. You have told us in Colossians 4 verse 5 to 6, Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. We don't always know what that wisdom is, but we know that if we earnestly seek you through prayer and scriptures, that your Holy Spirit will guide us. We have so many touch points every day, be it in our community, with family or friends, within our church, on social media platforms, or with complete strangers. Help us to remember that by sharing and living our faith, we may make a difference to someone or plant a seed at least. Please help us to be consistent in our loving attitudes and behaviours so that people may see your light and smell your fragrance through us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. on fire and every step will be a prayer hope is rising new day dawning sound of singing fills the air two thousand years and still the flame is burning bright Across the land, hearts are waiting, longing, aching for awakening once again. Let the flame burn brighter in the heart of the darkness, turning night to glorious day. stronger let it shine let it shine we'll walk for truth speak out for love in Jesus name we shall be strong to lift the fallen Save the children to fill the nation with your song. Let the flame burn brighter in the heart of the darkness, turning night to glorious day. Let the song grow louder as our love grows stronger. Let it shine.